what is this, a trauma Olympics? Trauma, 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 chameleon. It'll affect your life no matter how long you've been away from the trauma, no matter what it is. If it's really bad, it'll have a dark nature, which was written, produced, and directed by Berkeley Brady, and also written by Tim Cairo, who did a movie called Low Life. Check out the respective IMDb pages for the full listing of their work. And it stars Hannah Anderson. Anderson, that's me. If anybody gets that reference, I love you guys. She plays Joy, a bright young woman that is just trying to get away from a very, very emotionally, physically, and all-around abusive relationship. Fortunately, she has her friend Carmen, <coughs> played by Madison Walsh, and these two are going to get over this grief together because Carmen is there for her through thick and goddamn thin and thicker stuff and everything. That's what friends do. They stick together. So Carmen says, Joy, come on this backpacking trip in the Calgary wilderness, somewhere in Calgary. I don't exactly know because I've never actually been to Calgary, but that's where the INDB page says it was filmed, and the locations are pretty. And they go along with a couple of other patients that have experienced uh, various forms of trauma. They get alluded to, and also there's a doctor, Dr. Carroll, as it were, overseeing this whole thing, and they talk about their experiences. And there is music, beautiful locations, camping, sharing stuff, and this overlaying theme that... Do you ever have the feeling that you were being watched and why Bugs Bunny turned into a New York gangster in my mind? I don't know, but is this just, you know, their trauma, you know, coming back into their face and manifesting as stuff and nothing's actually there? Or are they being watched? Are they being stalked? What's going on? Is one of their exes just around the corner? What's happening in the Canadian wilderness? Well, we find out a little bit later on what could actually be happening. We solve this mystery before any of these people are history. Dark nature tales, woohoo. So yeah, five <coughs> women backpack through the Canadian wilderness and share those experiences and everything and that kind of stuff. And we eventually find out what's going on. And I will certainly say that this movie is beautifully shot and decently acted, especially from the two leads. And... It is a threadbare story. It does try to go in one direction and then goes over here where it's like, no, no, wait, we're not going here. But pa, we're going over there. And I get what they were going for. And the movie overall, it, it it's not bad, but it's also not that great, but does show potential. I think that the director, producer, writer, and Tim Cairo, the other right, they show they can craft something decent. This is not the most wholly original thing, but it does show how one could deal with grief and, you know, trauma and everything, regardless of what they experience. And nobody should have to experience traumatic relationships, abusive relationships, none of that stuff. Don't abuse your partners. Don't goddamn abuse your partners. You're supposed to be together in lockstep. <laughs> Treat each other equal. There you go. Other than that, there really isn't a whole lot to talk about until I get into spoilers. But yeah, it is what it is. Uh, some characters make really dumb decisions. That could be due to reflections and flashbacks of trauma, or just because we need to write some people out of the movie. Nevertheless, it is what it is. And we find out, can friendship really <coughs> survive and conquer all? And also trauma. So nevertheless, I am going to get into spoilers. It's currently on Amazon Prime if you want to check it out. I do look forward to seeing what else uh, Berkeley Brady can end up doing. And that being said, the two lead actresses, they do fine, is what it is. So there you go. That's it right there. Three, two, one, and spoilers. Okay. So they share their trauma. It does turn out that one uh, particular scene, you know, plays into the film a little bit later on. Obviously, we do see how Joy and her now X were together. He was abusive, even killed the dog. Really could have done without that, but it does set off the story. And it was off screen. I mean, they showed a dead animal. And this the budget for this was $1 million Canadian, which according to the exchange rate is about 735k or so as of now. So, okay, about you know 75% of a U.S. million, and that's fine. Hey, if you got the ingenuity and everything and you're smart, you can make a small budget like that work. And they do, for the most part. Some good makeup effects, I'll say that much. Once they get to the revelation of what's actually going on, some good makeup effects. Um, Joy keeps reflecting on all this stuff's going on. There's a character named Tara that has cuts on her wrist. And while, dri while driving to uh, the particular starting point, they run into a couple campers. One is looking for his dog. Hmm, hmm. What actually could be going on? 
So they wander around. Um, they start to sense more and more that things are going a little bit tits up. Dr. Carroll says, no, it's fine. Don't worry. <laughs> push through your trauma. Push through this. I would never willingly and knowingly put people in danger. Well, it turns out she did. Because she also mentions how there's uh, this place, this particular area. It's a sacred um, area where offerings are made for peace and other stuff and everything to a spirit. But that hasn't been done in a while. What happened to the spirit? So then we find out. There's a slimy, disgusting, rotting creature that looks like a demented, inbred Bigfoot. And th that's not a knock. That's the best way I can describe it. And is stalking and killing and ends up finally <laughs> unleashing on them once they get into the deep, deep woods. And then it ends up killing, well, it ends up severing the doctor's foot, dragging her back to a cave somehow. The one named Shayna um, that is in, that was in the military and everything and suffered trauma, she ends up falling to her death. It's down to three. <laughs> Tara ends up getting captured. And from there, we just have... Um, we have a creature feature. It just basically goes to a creature feature in about the last, like, 30 minutes, which is fine. It is what it is. But the thing is, is the story, the story's threadbare. It's not a bad story. There just isn't a lot of meat to it. And it relies on the strength of Joy and Carmen's, uh, you know, respected characters and the performances by the actresses, which is fine. It's fine for what it is. They do manage to escape after Tara basically sacrifices herself, and then they're getting back to camp because um, everybody's everybody was fucked or killed in the cave, fucked up or killed in the cave. The creature didn't do that la that first part, and then Carmen ends up having a leg wound. Basically, what ends up happening is Joy confesses. Um, well, I actually saw him. I saw my ex. That the day that you came to get me, he had come over and he was all upset because he, an abusive significant other, will keep trying to get back to the person and make sure that they are lo they lock their claws into them again because God damn it, they know they know what's best. They don't know what's best, but God damn it, it's all about control. So from there, she basically says, "This is what happened." She tell, And we see this. She cracked him over the head with a vase when he tried to get her. So he could be dead in her house. He could be coming back to... He could be, you know, uh, bleeding out. Who really goddamn knows? Because they've been out in the woods for a little bit. Carmen's pissed. She said, I was giving you this one last chance. And I can't be friends with somebody that isn't willing to get, you know, over their... Try I, that I care more about their well-being than they do. I've had enough, basically. This was told in a few <laughs> little video sessions by the respective patients that the doctor had watched, including Carmen, who had basically alluded to the fact that I seem to care about her more than she cares about her, and I'm getting sick of it. But then Joy, even though she's pissed off at her, Carmen gets drug away, she goes and rescues Carmen, and there was this thing about the ex using a lighter, just flicking a lighter, flicking one of those like giant lighters, and then she decides, I got some bear spray, I got some stuff, <laughs> She ends up killing the whole damn thing. First, she kind of embraces the slimy creature because it's a manifestation of trauma as she sees it. Then she sticks it in the eye with a knife, implementing what she wanted to do to her ex, and then hits it with bear spray and then hits it with a lighter and burns it. And then her and Carmen escape, and then they get back to town, seemingly. But first, they have to make a decision. Do they go to the hospital? Do they go back to Joy's house to see if the ex is still there? And if he's recovered, maybe kill him, or maybe just bury his body. They decide to go back there. Somewhere in the Canadian wilderness. I really don't know much about Calgary. But that being said, it gets a C. It handles the material fine, but it really does stretch itself a little bit too thin. That being said, decent concept, well filmed, good atmosphere, just a C. That being said, watch it. Give it a shot. Maybe you'll like it more than I did, but I appreciate the effort that they made. Agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rutland. I'll see you soon.